Hey friends, and welcome to the Happy Hour with Jamie Ivey podcast. I'm your host, Jamie, and I'm so glad you're here. Each week on this show, I invite a girlfriend to join me and we chat about the big things in life, the little things in life, and everything in between. One of the sponsors for today's show is Nations Photo Lab. Get professional quality prints right at your fingertips with the new app from Nations Photo Lab. Download the app and get their best-selling 5x7 prints for free. Get the prints that professional photographers and Instagram enthusiasts alike go crazy for. Ordering the app is as easy as one, two, three. Upload, review, and print. Get your 10 free 5x7 prints from Nations Photo Lab app. Available in the App Store or Google Play Store. Hello, friends, and welcome to May. It is May 1st. I cannot believe that we have made it through spring and summer is so close. I was telling someone the other day that May feels like a big, just like release of air. Like we have almost made it. It's almost summertime. School's almost over. If you're a student or a mama, you are almost to the end. And I also want to let you know that if you're listening to this on release day of May 1st, I'm on my way right now to Kansas City to join my friend Jennifer Allwood, who's been a guest on the show before at her Equipped Conference. I am super excited about going to the conference, speaking to all the beautiful women that are gonna be there. And if you're gonna be there, as always, please come say hi to me. I'd love to meet you. I'm a hugger, so just come on in. On today's show, my friend Kate Merrick comes back on the show and joins me. Kate was a guest on episode number 133, where we talk a lot about what it was like for her and her husband to walk through the death of their daughter. Well, today she's back and we talk about that a little bit, but what we talk about mostly is how her and her husband and her entire family really in those last couple of months of her daughter's life really dedicated to practice being present together. They packed up their bags and they moved to Israel for some medical treatment for their daughter. And during that time, God showed Kate and her husband, and her family, what it was like to really be present with each other. And my hope for all of us that are listening or that read her book is that it doesn't take an experience like the Merricks went through for us to also realize that. During Kate's process of that, she gave up social media. And today we talk a lot about why she gave that up, what it's looked like for her. And I even throw in my own two cents of what social media has looked like for me over the past couple of months. You're going to love our conversation. Also, I have some super exciting news for you guys. Happy Hour Live tickets are on sale today for our next Happy Hour Live event. We do these Happy Hour Live events twice a year. We do them two nights back to back. We just most recently had our most previous Happy Hour Live on April 26th and 27th. And our next event is going to be right here in Austin, Texas on August 16th and 17th. It is right around the corner, my friends. And let me tell you, this is the weekend before my kids go back to school. So it's going to be the perfect way to spend the final weekend before our kids go back to school here in Austin. August 16th and 17th, here is how you are going to find out about tickets. Make sure you're a part of the newsletter. So if you subscribe to our newsletter, you would have already gotten information this morning about how to get tickets. The link was in there. You're racing to your computer. You're calling your girlfriends. You're getting your tickets. If you're not a part of our newsletter, well, you need to be, but... Check out my Instagram tomorrow at Jamie Ivy, and I will have the link there for you to buy tickets. Now you're wanting to know, who's going to be on your stage with you, Jamie? Well, just recently at the last Happy Hour Live, if you were there, it was amazing. We had Catherine Lowe, Amy Hannon, Jackie Hill Perry, and Andy Andrew. In August, our guests are Rebecca Lyons, Ruth Simons, Lisa Turkhurst, and Cezanne Hendricks. It's going to be a phenomenal night right here in Austin, Texas. So get your tickets. All right, friends, enough about Happy Hour Live, which I hope you get to come to because it is so much fun. Here is my conversation with Kate Merrick. Kate, welcome to the Happy Hour. Thank you, Jamie. So great to have you in Austin, Texas. It's so fun to be in Austin, Texas. Okay, so you were on the show two years ago. We just looked it up, number 133. Yes. That March is when the show aired. I bet we had met that February. Yeah, we did. Uh Uh Uh-huh. Yes, we did. I tell the story of how we met in that episode. It's one of my favorite meeting stories Aww, ever. It meant a lot to me. It, well, I read in your book, you said thank you to me, and I liked it. At the end, you said, for meeting under the lights at Lambert's. <gasps> you read that? I, I was hoping, it. I was hoping you would see it. I did read it. Okay. Um, but we did meet at a restaurant, snuggled yes. up in a booth yes. and sharing your life. Yes. Uh, but if you haven't listened, seriously, go back and listen. 
didn't get a backstory on Kate's life, but welcome to Austin. Thanks. Since we met two years ago, we've actually traveled to Italy together. Yes. That was a fun trip. So my literary agent, Jenny Burke, yes. who works with your literary agent, mm-hmm. Don Jacobson, mm-hmm. plans a trip every other year, maybe? A yeah, writer's every other. retreat. Uh-huh. Yeah. And you and I both ended up on it. And I was so glad that you were there. Jamie, you invited me. Listen, I had heard oh, about- Oh, I invited you. I didn't even you remember. Did. <laughs> I had heard about that trip and I was super jealous and I didn't know, like, how do I get myself on this list, right? Like, and then you're just like, well, I'll just never be that cool or whatever. And then one night I get a text from you and you're like, hey, check your email. I literally like squealed, like And squealed. you like, immediately said, yes, I want to go. I, I was like, yes and amen, I'm there. I don't like, I don't care. I will move heaven and earth, all the things. Yes, I'm there. I know. So. I had watched the trip previously that she took other people. Okay. And thought, man, that seems amazing. And we had so much fun. And it was so good. Aaron was there. And so that was fun to meet Aaron. Uh-huh. Yeah. Aaron Ivy. Aaron Ivy. Aaron Ivy. He's a good guy. I know we're now we just need to meet your man. I know. Okay, Kate, you are an author. You are um, a speaker. Yes. A mama to three kids. Mm-hmm. Church planner, Mm -hmm. surfer, yes, chicken owner, (laughs) totally, donkey (laughs) owner, unfortunately, unfortunately. (laughs) Um, What else? Hmm. What else is about it? Um, I I am a crazy person. I don't know. I think my husband thinks I'm a little bit crazy for being such a hippie. Like, if it's good for me. Like, um, yes, add to bag. I'm telling you right now, like, I've been putting mushrooms in my coffee. Well, I don't drink coffee. Mushrooms in my tea. You know, like, ground up mushrooms. I've heard of this, yes. So I'm just one of those weirdo hippie people. What else do you do that's weird that's hippie-ish? Oh, okay. Which you would fit right in in Austin, so don't even stress about that here. Yeah, no, I'm not stressed about it. Yeah. I'm not. I, well, tell I, Britt that I you're— I fly my freak flag pretty— <laughs> Okay, go for it. <laughs> loud and proud. Okay, what else? Oh, I'm a natural deodorant girl. And unfortunately, I'll have pit marks. Like, I'll go back and someone will ask, oh, I need a video clip of you. And I'll go back to uh, speaking, like, huge pit marks. I hear you. And honestly, I'm I'm old now. I don't care. I'm 44. I'm like, whatever. Armpits sweat. Like, right? Yeah. What natural deer do you use? Okay, so right now? Because I have one that I love. Ooh, I can't wait to hear. Uh-huh. Okay. I've been through, like, I don't know, $200 worth of natural yeah. deodorant. Mm-hmm. Which is like four, four, four. Which is like four, six. No, it's so true. (laughs) Yeah. Right now, Kupari. Oh, I've used them before. It's amazing. It glides on smooth. My pits smell like coconuts Uh and it works the best for me. They have a bunch of beauty products that I've used before that I really enjoy. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Right now, I'm using Primally Pure. I have that. The charcoal one. That's what I have. Uh huh. I love it. It didn't work for me. I think every, this is the thing. If you're listening and you want to step into this hippie deodorant stuff, <laughs> I think everyone has to figure out what works for them because yes. primarily pure, their lavender one did not work for me. Oh. The charcoal one. Okay. I'm here for this. Okay. Maybe I'll try lavender. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, Jamie, I'm about to give you the tip of a lifetime. Well, not a lifetime. Okay. A year. Okay. Anyway, great tip. Pacifica, there's a brand called Pacifica. Love those people. It's that's another hippie thing I love. Um, they make deodorant wipes. Oh, so you so wipe away the sweat because you get on that plane five hours later, yes. you're slamming. Yes. right. You're slamming. I I can I can work out all day long, not reek, and then but I get on a plane, it's nasty. These I promise you, they're wipes. You just all good. And then you reapply your natural deodorant. No, it has like deodorant. It like cleans <gasps> and need, gives can you, you a send fresh me some of those? layer. Yes, I will. Um, okay. okay. So Kate, you just released a new book. I did. In April called Here Now. Yes, ma'am. Which I always want to say here and now. Sorry about that. That's fine. Lots of people do it. What's here. the, how are they, is that how people are mispronouncing it? Because my book gets mispronounced all the time. No, it's, Okay, that's one of the reasons I chose such a short title. Nobody can say my first book correctly. Uh, okay. They're like, and and they're even reading it. Here we have Kate Merrick, and she's the author of, and she still laughs. I'm yeah. Like, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. So you went short this time. I went short this time. I had to beg my publisher. I, I, I'm not going to say out loud what they wanted me to name it. But I'll tell, tell you us, this. Tell <laughs> us. This is the good stuff. <laughs> really? Yes. Oh, oh, okay. It's not mean. Okay, okay. So I got an email from my 
editor whom I adore. I love everybody. Which I think people need to know this. Authors don't always have the final word in things. No, no, we don't. Like we were working for them. They're not working for us. It's true. I mean, unless you're. I mean, if you're going to stand your ground, it, it better be worth it. And, and your name me, can be like John Grisham or something. Sure. Then you can say whatever Ever you, you want. want. Yeah. Yes. Because for us, money movies, talks. This, yeah, yeah. Right. They're mm-hmm. like, we don't know. Okay. So they wanted to call it. Are you ready for this? Uh-huh. The quieting of the soul. That doesn't sound like you at all. Not at all. I, I, I wrote my editor an email. I said, Jessica, two things. Number one, that sounds like a feminine product. <laughs> Yes, it does. I'm like, number two, I will crawl on my knees to Nashville for to have not have my name on the cover of a book called The Quieting of the Soul. Like, what can you do for me right now? I mean, I'm picturing like a teapot, mm-hmm. a doily. I mm-hmm. can't do this. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not me. Which your book is a lot. It's a that does sum up parts of your book. She said to me, Well, those are your words. And I was oh. like, Stop. No, they're not. And she showed me. It was in the introduction, which is now no longer in the book. Uh, But it was in context. It made sense. Uh Yeah. No, not doing it. So I'm like, okay, no one can botch here now. No radio announcer. No, you know, random hostess from a conference. Uh Here now. It's pretty easy. Here now. Like, they wanted me to call it She Still Laughs, my first book. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, like, she and laughs. They need to sit next to each other on the bus. They are best friends. They can't be apart because it gives you. So like, what's the name? And still she laughs. And still she laughs. She and laughs. And still she laughs. Okay. And because you know what I mean, it's like certain words mm-hmm. give you a picture. And I love painting a picture. Like you, you can learn things from a book that you can never learn from a movie, or you know any other real piece of art, mm-hmm. or if you if you want to call it that. Yeah. But it's important to me. So, yeah. Words anyway, matter. You're an author. It works better. So your first book, and still she laughs. Yes. Um, is you talking about walking through trials and suffering when yes. your daughter, Daisy. Yes. Um, is the book, does it start when she's diagnosed or is it the journey after? Totally after. Okay, I, totally I didn't after. want to revisit it, any okay. of that. No. Okay. So your daughter, Daisy, diagnosed with cancer, ended mm-hmm. up um, losing her life. What year? 2013. 2013. Yeah. And so this is the book kind of, talking after that Mm -hmm. and still she laughs yes and now this book here now yes is journeying it's almost like you went back i did you went back chronologically yes to the journey of you and your husband going on when you guys spent months in israel Mm -hmm. um looking for medical um assistance for your daughter yes and you go all the way back to about what it looked like to have a a purpose and a quieting of the soul. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I'm going to see how many like times we can use that. Pads in, the thing. in your armpits. Yes. I mean, we're just all about like the grossest stuff already. But in all honesty, it is about kind of coming back and saying, hey, what matters? And what am I going to focus on? What am I going to spend my life on? So was this book harder to write or the first one? The first one wrote itself. I I literally, Jamie, I wrote the whole book before I ever sent it to my agent. It was journals and stuff? No. Oh, you just wrote I it just out? I sat down and wrote a book. Okay. I mean, it took a few months. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't want anyone's input. My husband's written a couple books, so I've, I've seen, oh, they have a lot of input. They have some say. I didn't want any say. I'm like, I'm going to write it if it gets published the way it is. Great but I'm not going to change it for anybody. Mm-hmm. I don't have to get this book published. Yeah. So yeah, so I kind of just, it wrote itself. It's one of those things where like, it just had to come out. Obviously, I had an editor yeah. and obviously she made it better and all the things. Yeah. Um, this one was more of a struggle because it was something that I'm still discovering and still kind of working on. And so yeah, I go back to what it was like, like what I was doing the night before she was diagnosed, like what kicked me into gear. Um you know, that even gives you like a heads up. You don't have all the time in the world, lady. What are you going to do with it? And then kind of being in Israel is like the springboard. Those stories are like the springboard of what God has taught us. And it kind of goes back and forth. So like I tell some stories of like recently and what it's like, you know, when our town burnt down. Well, the town didn't burn down, but yeah. like there was a huge wildfires in California, what that was like. And, um, you know, take what I learned in Israel to— put it into practice really. I mean, it's so, I feel so lucky to be able to, who gets to go off the grid for mm. three months? This sounds dreamy. It's so dreamy. It now, was so but awful. I want to, I was going to ask. My daughter was dying. I mean, it was exactly. awful. It was, but you know, I was just thinking, I was driving on the way here and I was just thinking about how 
God has designed our bodies to work best when there is some resistance. You know, do it like say, um, I don't know, just like exercise. We get healthier when our muscles get stressed out and then they have to, you know, work better. Mm -hmm. And how we've all grown through the hardest things that we've gone through. And then we become stronger people. We become, you know, better in certain ways. And so I, I'm grateful for, for that in that sense. I mean, people say, oh, you know, would you trade it? Yeah, I'd trade it right now to have my little girl who'd be 14 sitting next to me on this pink chair. You know, like, yes, I would trade it a million times over. But that's not how my life went. Like, this is how my life went. And so, okay, Lord, what are you going to do with this? Yeah. So you look back on that time in Israel and you think, okay, this is definitely not what I would ever chosen. This is the worst thing that we're walking through. Mm -hmm. Probably the worst thing you'll ever walk through mm -hmm. on this earth. Hopefully. Hopefully. Um, <laughs> but you also look back and go, God, you grew our family yes. so much. Tell me, like when you look back on those months that you guys were off the grid in mm -hmm. Israel, um, really soaking in family time, mm -hmm. you know, unbeknownst mm -hmm. to you what the future was going to hold, yeah. um, but also looking for something to save your daughter. Mm -hmm. What is, when you look back on that time, what is one of the most profound things that you learned in those months? Ooh, there's so many things. I'm going to back up real quick and tell a story about how how we chose to go off the grid. So we're in the hospital at UCLA. We're harvesting daisy stem cells because the experimental treatment we're going to go receive in Tel Aviv, they needed a few things before we got there. We're sitting in the hotel, or sorry, in the hospital. It had already been a week. She's got her femoral arteries hooked up to this awful machine. It's the harvesting, harvesting, harvesting. She hardly has any stem cells to give because of the chemotherapy. And I'm sitting in a chair by the window. It's, I think it's July and I'm looking out the window. It's hot. It's LA. I hate cities. And I am looking at Instagram. I'm scrolling through and I'm scrolling through. And the bitterness was growing and growing and growing. And everyone else's little girls had long flowing hair. And everyone else is at the beach. And everyone else is at a barbecue. And I'm in the hospital with a dying little girl. And I was so... I felt so sorry for myself, Jamie. I took a photo and I posted it with some, you know, snarky, what is it called? <laughs> Caption yeah. or whatever. Uh -huh. And I, I did that so people would feel sorry for me. Mm. I wanted- like That was the motive of your heart. That was my motive. I wanted everyone to feel sorry for me. And I posted it and I just felt like the Lord said, look up. And I'm sitting in that awful chair and I look over and I see Daisy- and she's bald and she's so thin and she's so sick. And I felt like God saying, she's still here. She's still here and she loves you and she's awesome. <laughs> and she wants to play with you. She wants to do puzzles and play cards and watch cartoons. Why are you wasting your time on that? And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I set it down and I went over to her and I remember just getting in bed with her and just like loving our time together. And that was kind of our, it was like a wake up call. And so in the following weeks, I think we left for Israel maybe three weeks after that. In the following weeks, Britt and I are talking, okay, what are we going to do with life? How, how do we want our life to look? We don't know how long we're going to be there. It was open-ended ticket. We don't know how long that she's going to withstand treatment. What's going to happen? What do we do? And we looked at each other and we're like, we have to go social media. He was on Twitter. I had Instagram. I still technically have it. I haven't looked at it in seven years. I don't know how to get on it. I don't care. I don't want to know. Um, he went off his Twitter. That still technically exists. I looked it up. It's so weird and sad. Um, so we went off social media, but not only did we go off social media, we left our smartphones in America. Like, who does that? Who's like, yeah, I'm going to go to this foreign country and leave my smartphones behind. And we rented a GPS that had like a British accent. That is so funny because there are kids that don't even know what that is. No, it's true. I would, I mean, I would say, well, we were going to get maps and then we we're like, <laughs> yeah. no, literally like a paper map uh -huh. that folds. And then we were like, oh no, you can rent a GPS. Yeah. We rented a GPS. She had a British accent. Yeah. We ended up calling her Madge. I like I it. I don't know why, but we were like, oh, Madge is telling us. Uh -huh. And then there was, she would always say, course, the roundabout, because there's like so many roundabouts. And we couldn't tell. Is she saying, cross the roundabout? 
like course it. And then we're like, she's saying curse the roundabout. Curse it. So every time we would go through a roundabout, we'd curse the roundabout. We'd be like, curse you roundabout. (laughs) That is so funny. (laughs) Which is so weird. So yeah, that was like, that was like the beginning to this whole crazy practicing presence journey of, you know, all this stuff. And, and I think it, it was just practical for us. And it was, Jamie, it was magical. It was magical. I did not want to waste one second in Israel. And it was, not only was it just this, okay, this is, this is why I wanted to back up and talk about going off social media. Because it's not just social media. It's constant connection. Mm. It's texts, calls, emails, family, friends, well-wishers, strangers. All the things, you know, like we had a blog that had over a million unique hits that were like, we had people like literally policing the comments. And I just, it was just so much. I I didn't, I quit looking at that a long time ago. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, But, but just being so easily available and accessible, it, we realized every second we spend on that are, those are the seconds we're not spending on each other. Mm -hmm. We're not spending with the Lord. We're not, you know, we only have a certain amount of seconds, what are we going to do? So we left it all behind. We emailed our families once a week. And we literally, we always say, well, we don't always say, I've been saying, <laughs> we left our smartphones in America and we brought a, de- a deck of cards instead. And we played cards in every cafe in Israel. And it was like magical, magical. And so one of the most profound, backing way up, one of the most profound things I learned is that it's not necessarily digital distraction, I think um, everyone's like, well, the, the key is if you just go off Instagram, if you just do this, or if you just, that's that's a symptom of a deeper problem. And yeah, you manage it and you make it work for you. You don't work for it, but it was more than that. That was just the first step, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. Like that was just the first step. I'm not here to shame anybody for being addicted to their phone um, or to, you know, their socials or whatever it is. I don't think that's necessarily the problem at all. Yeah. 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 It's manifestation. So that presence that you guys found together. Yeah. Yeah. Um, If you were to be honest with me, Mm -hmm. had there ever been times when you're like, I wish I was a little bit more connected with how I used to be? I would say for the first five years, no, no. Um, There have been times that I have thought, should I go back on Instagram? You know, am I missing out on that? It, what I know there's relationships I could keep up better or this or that. And then I realize, no. No. So I have thoughts of it. Mm -hmm. And also, Jamie, I talk about it with my husband because he is working with Channel Island Surfboards, which is, he's like one of the top shapers in the whole wide world. Um, And they have been asking him to get an Instagram account. And I'm like- A personal one. A personal Uh one for the purpose of, you know, sharing his life. Yeah. And we've talked about it. And I'm like, dude, do you want all those people in your business? (laughs) <laughs> like, do you? Yeah. Do you want to be accessible to every surfer in the whole wide world? Uh-huh. And he's like, no. And then, and and not just like, oh, we're so awesome. We don't want to be accessible uh-huh. or anything like that. It's just, we know what it's like to be accessible. We know what it's like to have to deal with all that while you're trying to live your life and take care of your family and, mm-hmm. and all that things. But also, JB, we don't have pure enough hearts. Like honest time, honest time right now, we just don't. Like my house, we live, it's so fun. We have miniature donkeys and baby goats. They're hilarious. Like our donkeys literally do goat yoga. Do you know goat yoga? Yeah, oh yeah, we know goat yoga here. <laughs> yeah, yes. you do. Hello. <laughs> my donkeys do it. Like I will walk out and like goats will be on the donkey back. Okay, that's hilarious. Hilarious. And like we went out there and saw it and we're like, this is so funny. If we were on social media, we'd post this. But like, what would my motivation be? Like, don't you guys think I'm cool? Do you, do you like me? Do you think I'm cool? You know, and I just know my heart. I, I know that I would love the affirmation too much and make too much of the criticism. Mm. And I need the space to just be free of that yeah. at this point. I'm leaving the door open. Like if if I go on Instagram tomorrow, <laughs> we're not going to shame you or no. don't shame me. No, um, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah. yeah, you know I have learned a lot in the past couple of weeks because I have taken off Instagram for Lent. Oh, good for you! I know, and so I've just started talking about it in the past couple of weeks. But um, 
I have learned so much. A lot of what you're talking about as mm-hmm. well as I'm noticing is my very unpure heart and desire for affirmation. Right. My um, feeling connected in a very weird, not personal way. Mm-hmm. My need almost to be known, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. I've talked with some friends of mine who are also on Instagram. Uh, like this yeah. is a common thing, sure. you know, and... um I'm a fan of social media. Totally. But I've seen in the past, how many weeks has it been? Four weeks Mm -hmm. of how much more space my soul has to breathe. Right. And so you're onto something, Mm -hmm. you know. I uh, definitely will come back different with a little, with a lot more boundaries in place. Right. But I have seen about how difficult it is to, um, even believe in what I'm doing matters sometimes when I'm looking Mm -hmm. at what other people are doing that seems bigger and better. I can't or do it. I to can't focus do it. on, I started to realize, I think I focus more on these 80,000 people than the five people in my house sometimes. Mm-hmm. And that was, For that's sure. disgusting. Like I want to vomit when I say that out loud. You know what I mean? But totally. Honest hour. Totally. And so it's been really good for me. So yeah, in your I book, I mean, when I read it months ago, was just so good for me about mm. thinking through that. I mean, you start out, I was rereading some of it just this week and you start out talking about the night before Daisy was diagnosed. Mm-hmm. and. You you bring me into the story and the reader because we all have done what you're doing. Oh yeah, unbeknownst to you, the right. night before your daughter gets a cancer diagnosis, yes, is you're just online shopping for some lipstick for 45 minutes. Oh, forever. Did you buy the lipstick? It was it was a tinted moisturizer. Tinted moisturizer. That's right. Which and you is, did buy it because you said it came. In I the totally mail. bought it. Yeah, it did. It came in the mail. Yeah, but as I was mm-hmm. reading that, I was even like. You know, you read stuff like that and you hear about, okay, you're spending 45 minutes buying tinted moisturizer and you have no clue that the next day your life will change forever. Yes. And um, I've thought about that this week with mm. interactions within my family of, mm-hmm. I'm also, I can also be kind of morbid, okay? So oh, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm the queen of morbid. I'm so Erin gets so Bring mad at me. On. But I have had thoughts before, like, if this is my last conversation with my kid, does it matter? Yeah. I don't, you've been do, through this road. Yes. I don't know that I can keep up those thoughts, Kate, like every single day. Okay, but listen, Jamie, this is what it, literally 100% of us die, okay? All of us Like, will. it's okay. I, I, I said that once to the checkout lady, like when I was pregnant with Fifi, she's like, oh, is she your first? I'm like, she's my third. And she's like, how old are the others? And I'm like, oh, here we go. This is awkward, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, my son's blah, blah, blah. My daughter's, she would be 12, but she's in heaven. And she's like, <gasps> and I'm like, it's okay. 100% of us die. And she's like, <gasps> <laughs> don't talk about it. Don't talk about yeah. it. Yeah, um, I do that too. I leave the house. I'm like, dude, look me in the eye. Mm-hmm. Just in case. Just in case. And then you go on. Yeah. Love you. Uh-huh. Big kiss. Just in case. See you soon. Uh-huh. You know, it's okay. It's okay. Like, that's another thing I think I appreciate about having, here I go, morbidity, having handed my daughter's body over is... Just realizing, like, this is all part of it. This is not, oh my gosh, this doesn't happen to anyone but me. Like, this happens to everybody. And someday I could be a widow. I, both of my kids, my son's in Australia with his dad right now. They might not come home. Who knows? I don't know. And you know what? It's been a good run. We always say that when we're on the plane together, like a Brit and I fly together. Like, you know, when it comes in for landing and it gets a little wonky and you're like, we're going to die right now. Uh, oh, yeah. He, he looks over at me and he's like, it's been a good run. And I'm like, it's been a good run. And he's like, I love you. I've always been true. And I'm like, me too, babe. Me too. <laughs> it is so And then you good. get off the plane and go get your luggage yeah, and head on to where you're going. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But like, it's become something that we say all the time because he could be a widower. Yeah. I, whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be all right. Yeah. It is. All right, friends, I know you are loving my conversation with Kate, but I want to take just a second to thank our sponsors. Today's show is brought to you by Molecule. Imagine if your phone was the same as it was in the 1940s. Well, that is exactly when the technology that you were using to clean your air was developed with the invention of the HEPA filter. Thankfully, Molecule has introduced a breakthrough science that is finally capable of destroying air pollutants at a molecule level. 
Molecule's technology goes beyond HEPA filtration. It captures and completely destroys the full spectrum of indoor air pollutants, including those a thousand times smaller than what a HEPA filter can catch. In fact, you guys, in a study of 49 allergy sufferers presented at the American College of Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology, Molecule's technology provided dramatic, statistically significant symptoms reduction within a week of use. One customer even said she was able to breathe through her nose for the first time in 15 years. You guys, it creates a complete and clean air purification experience from the materials used on the device, like its sleek, solid aluminum shell, to a streamlined filter subscription with replacement filters arriving at your doorstep when you need them. Friends, I have the Molecule air filter in my bedroom, and we can tell a great difference in the air that we are breathing. Molecule has helped me personally not have one allergy attack this spring. That is amazing living in Austin, Texas. Right now, you can get $75 off your first order. Visit molecule.com. That is M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com and enter the code Jamie at checkout. Molecule, the air you were meant to breathe is finally here. Okay, guys, I also want to thank another one of our sponsors, and that is Away. Away offers high-quality luggage at a much lower price by cutting out the middleman and selling directly to you. When you get your Away luggage, you get to choose from nine different colors and four different sizes. The carry-on, which I have in gray, the bigger carry-on, which I also have in pink, and then there's the medium or the large, which I think I might need for a trip this summer. All suitcases are made with premium German polycarbonate, which is lightweight and unrivaled in strength and impact resistance. And I know that because I have sat on my away suitcase many of nights in a hotel room getting it zipped. Also, the 360-degree spinner wheels guarantee a smooth ride. Best of all, both sizes of the carry-on are able to charge anything that's powered by a USB cord. And thanks to their lifetime warranty, if anything breaks, Away will fix or replace it. Try it for 100 days, and if at any point you decide it's not for you, return it for a full refund, no questions asked. I will let you know this, guys. Last time I was in the airport, heading to Boston with my son, Amos, I was standing there getting ready to board. I had my Away suitcase in hand, and I heard two women talking, and one of them had the Away suitcase, and she said, yes, I just kept hearing it on podcast shows, and I knew I had to try it out, and I love it. And I smiled because... I knew that she was a listener of the happy hour because not 10 minutes earlier, she'd said, oh, hey, Jamie, I love your show. So I promise you, I use these bags and I love them so much. You can get $20 off a suitcase. Visit awaytravel.com slash happy hour. Use the promo code happy hour during checkout. That's awaytravel.com slash happy hour and use the promo code happy hour for $20 off a suitcase. Did you know uh, my friend Winter Pitts who passed away? Yes. Okay. So one of the things that stood out to me, and I love talking with her husband, Jonathan, about this on the show a couple weeks ago. I like that episode. Oh, thank you. But one of the Mm -hmm. things that I got to talk with them about that will never leave me until I go see Jesus, I'll never forget this, is talking about how she ran her race so well. Uh, And we hear that, you know, like run the race up before you, all the things. But just like you said, we no one knows when our last day is, Mm-mm. and but God does, and that sounds so Christianese and churchy. It's but, comforting, but the reality of it is, is that no one's guaranteed eighty years. No, like he oh, could be no. like the best plan I have for Daisy yes. is eight and a half years. Eight and a half years. Yeah, that's that's my whole goal for her. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? And my best plan for winter is thirty eight years. Right. And to think, God, I don't know the number, but whatever it is. Yes. Can people say she ran her race well? Right. Which is goes back to what you're talking about. Like, do we, yes. if we only get so many years. Or even so many hours in the day. Mm. How do you want to spend your hours? You know? Like, yeah. I, I, I think it helps. Okay. This is what I learned is that when you boil it down to like the moment by moment thing, I, I, I've discovered that life is a collection of moments and that, you know, it's not. Your next book could be called Precious Moments. That's a great idea. <laughs> I'm picturing like a soft pastel. Yes. yes. Isn't that the figurines we used to have when we were yes. little? Yes. Oh, With yeah. like the I had giant heads yeah, yeah. and uh-huh. the big eyes. Yeah. Okay. Carry yeah, on. I'm sorry to moment. interrupt you. Okay. Um, the life is a collection of moments. It's not like, okay, this is Jamie. This was her life. It was the show was successful or da da da. Or, you know, this tragic thing. It's like, no, Jamie's life is every single day. Mm. Jamie's life is a conversation she had with Story in the kitchen. Jamie's life is, you know, 
all the things going to going to Italy, yes, but it's also doing yard work with Aaron. It's all those things together. And you're like, okay, I always used to tell my kids, you know what? God has given us a, a certain amount of money and we can choose how we want to spend it. And so I'm like, I feel like time is, you know, time is money. Okay, well, how are we going to spend it? And we don't know exactly how much we've been given. And so we want to be sure that we're spending it so wisely. But like, I want everyone to be clear that I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm not saying like, you need to, you know, do all these things. But I'm just saying like, if, if your heart is troubled and you feel like, gosh, you know, maybe that was a waste of time. There is so much grace for that. Like, sweet, then get it out. Get it out of your life. No problem. Like for me, like the best spent weekend I can think of is spending seven hours on the beach, going home, having happy hour with my man or with our besties, you know, watching kids run around in the dark. Like those are the best things that I can think of to do. And there's balance. It's not like never be on social media, never reach out to these people, never be available. It's like be available when it's good and right and enjoy your life when it's good and right and preach the gospel when it's good and right. Cause that's part of it too. That's part of both of our jobs is like, oh yeah. Okay. Well, I get to go tell people really good news. This is so great. But am I going to do that seven days a week? No, that's not right. Even Mm -hmm. Jesus took a break. I love how the humanity of Jesus. I love thinking, wait, Jesus had to get away. Jesus had to eat food. Uh Jesus did all those things. And I'm like, you know what, Jesus, if it's good enough for you, it's good enough for me. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I think something that I really love that you just said is, because I'm always thinking through what is a listener hearing? And so what I feel like the listener's thinking is like, yes, I want this. Yes, this sounds amazing. How in the heck do I do this? Right? Like this seems so, some of, it can seem very outlandish, crazy to some people and Mm -hmm. other people, it can feel honestly like water to their dry soul. Like they're like, this is what I need. I need to pull back. And it's not about social media. Like we just talked about that, but just like you said, it could be whatever. Um, But my favorite thing that you just said is, how does what you just did make you feel? Mm. Did it drain you? Did Mm -hmm. it fill you? And Mm -hmm. listen, there's so many caveats to this. Like you have to go to work every day. Like you you have to make food for your kid. You know what I mean? Totally. But there are some ways that we can reevaluate. I'll give you an example from our life. Four kids. We have one particular kid who would do every single activity we ever let him do. And he would excel at every single activity we ever let him do. So we had a little kind of come to Jesus conversation. Mm -hmm. Aaron had it with me first because I also would tend to be the mom that would let him do all those things. Okay. Because he's happy and he's good at them. Sure. But yet on the flip side, I'm the wife and the woman that preaches, guard your time, spend time with your man, your family matters. But I'm also like, go deacon, do everything. Sure. It doesn't add up, right? Right. So Aaron and I had a conversation and he was so kind, but he was like, hey, We got to talk about this. And so we're like, okay, we need to talk to Deacon. And so Deacon didn't get to try out for a sport that his brother did at school because he's already playing baseball. Yeah. He was so sad about it. He thought we were like, the worst. We hate. No, it wasn't a fight or anything, but I could just tell he was let down. Sure. But one thing that Aaron and I talked about is sometimes we have to even show and teach our kids how much their time matters. Yes. And that if you're so drained because you're involved in every single thing, sure, all good things, you're going to have to pull back. And I think that on the flip side, women probably have a more of a tendency to do that. Oh, right. For sure. Do everything. Yes. But yet they're not really living. Right. Oh, the surface. You know? So I think even having like the conversation of saying, of, of a girlfriend to girlfriend going, hey, I'm going to invite you into my stuff. Mm-hmm. Here's everything I'm involved in. Here's everything I'm doing. Right. Here's what gives me life. Here's what doesn't. Can you speak right. truth into this? Oh, that's so good. And then you have to have someone look at you and go, I think you should pull off this committee. Or uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think your kids are doing too many things. Or yeah. when's the last time you hung out with your husband? Right. Right. Don't you yeah. see that with like, like building time with your yes. people? Okay. So it's like the diet. It's like, do you remember that chapter? So I was talking about how I have a sugar addiction. Oh. Fifi's birthday. Tell it. Tell it. Tell the story. Okay. Yeah. I made Fifi's birthday. My daughter, her name's Fifi. Yes, I know, I know. It's short for Fiodora with a PH. It means supreme <laughs> gift. We call her Fifi. She is Fifi all up and down. And she's all five? Place. She's just her five. Okay. Okay. Which so, just in case anyone didn't hear, you have an 18-year-old and a five-year-old. Yes, I do. I so love I have, your life. I have two only children. That's yes. what I have. Although 18, 
is magical. No. Can't wait to talk about it. it okay. 18, so good, so good. Okay, so I made Fifi some cupcakes because I just love homemade cupcakes. And I, she was going to have a little party. I made her the cupcakes. I thought that the recipe would yield 12. It yielded 24. Okay. Boom. So I was like, well, you know, I'm just going to do everybody a favor here and I'm just going to eat two, right? Just right out the right pan. Right now. Just yeah. <laughs> Like, that's all it takes for me to, <laughs> like, done. And then the party later had another one because I can't be, like, a rude party guest and not have one. Nobody likes the guest who's not eating the cupcake. And then the next day, I had the leftovers on top of the stove, which is where I keep my, I don't know why. If I have, like, a baked goods leftover, they're on a plate on the stove, which happens to be next to the trash can. And so I thought I could, I could, I could shove two more down before Fifi notices. And so I was hunching over the trash can and I ate two more cupcakes. And we're talking like a huge pile of frosting, homemade buttercream, just so much sugar just in my veins. And you loved it. <laughs> who loved it. And then I hated it afterward. And so sugar, like, obviously I have an addiction to sugar. And so I talk about how, like for 20 years, I'm in California, like we do diets, right? All the different diets. If there's a fad diet, like we're trying it. Mm -hmm. But the most recent is the Whole30 diet. Oh yes. Okay. Whole30 mm -hmm. will kick your butt. Mm -hmm. And you have to take out sugar, like all forms of alcohol. I'm talking vanilla extract, like, come on, grains. I'm like, what? It's really strict. It is so strict. Uh -huh. But the point of that it, is, is to figure out like, okay, something's not working right in your body. We got to figure out what it is so that we can get rid of it. And you got to do that for 30 days. And so it just, it taught me like, okay, sometimes you got to get something out that's not good for you at a cellular level so that you could put something else in you that is going to be so much better for you. And so I feel like our lives, we need to reflect that, you know, the whole 30 diet in, in our lives. Because, hey, if there's something that's making you sick, even though you love it and you want to hunch over the trash can and, <laughs> and right. inhale it, if it's making you sick in the long run, get it out. Yeah. Because there's a lot better choices out there. And so I just feel like we have the luxury of making choices. We have the luxury of saying no. We have the luxury of doing a digital detox. We have the luxury of going outside and playing and observing the Sabbath and all the things that are so good for us that we should be doing. Mm. It's okay. so good. It's so good. Because it is, even when we talk about the sugar, like I would have to use something different in my analogy because I'm not going to stand over the trash can and eat cupcakes. You're not? But I'll tell you what I did the other day. Okay. So I um, am just trying to... It's not, I wouldn't call it a diet. I'm just trying to cut out some bad stuff, right? Sure. So I decided I was going to start this on Monday. And I told Darren, that was yesterday in case you're wondering. I told Darren, I'm going to start this on Monday. Okay. And so on Sunday night, I ate an entire, this is so disgusting. <laughs> no, come on. I can't, wait. I can't wait. What was it? Eight ounce package of spinach artichoke dip. Oh, yeah. I ate the entire thing because no I knew problem. I couldn't have it after Sunday. Yes. And I'd have to throw it away. Nobody else in my house likes it. No, yeah. And so uh -huh. I joked with Aaron that I was going to do that. And he's like, don't do that. I mean, that's disgusting, Jamie. And I'm like, no, I'm kidding. I won't. And then you did. And then, did you turn your back so well, he couldn't he, see you? Well, he wasn't home. And he came home <laughs> later and asked. And I was like, I did. I did. I did. <gasps> but I, so I wouldn't go for the sugar, but I would go for the yes. dip. Yes. Okay. Trader Joe's. Do you guys have Trader Joe's? Yeah, Joe we do. Uh -huh. Okay. They have knockoff talkies. I don't like, oh, I, Takis are spicy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My kids like those. They're not as spicy uh -huh. as the, like the Taki brand. Girl, I could eat. I, I I go, I buy four bags. I ate a whole, and they're like, you know, family uh, the big size, bag. whatever. Yeah. They're not like uh -huh. individual. Like that will slay me. Mm. Yeah, Takis. Mm. I do like chips. Yeah, chips are good. Chips are so good. Um, okay, so I am so proud of you for writing this Thank because you. here's why I'm proud of you. Um, I know it took going Going back into something that was difficult, it's hard. It's hard to it's yes. hard to write about. But I love how you describe the season of your life as one of the most difficult, but also one of the most refreshing and mm. life changing. Yeah, I mean, if your life changed um, because of Daisy and her illness, but also God gave you some beautiful gift mm. through you stepping back. For sure, that get that gift that will last you for your lifetime of it what will. you learned. Yeah. You know, and what I you're giving you to girl. your kids, to your yeah. to your son and to Fifi is beautiful. So thank you. Thank you. And I know a lot of people are going to pick this book up and read it and their soul's gonna be refreshed as well. I hope so. That's why I wrote it. Um, listeners, Jamie Ivy wrote the foreword. I did write the foreword. Thank you, you Jamie the, Ivy. I was so honored that you asked me to do that. <gasps> I was 
so honored that you agreed to of or course. that you said yes. No, my you favorite, wrote me back and you said, I said yes out loud. And I was like, oh, I'm so happy. My favorite thing that I wrote in your forward it's dumb because it's not really that awesome, but it makes me Say giggle it. every know. single time. Okay. Is that you have to give your byline like oh. Jamie Ivy, author of yes. podcast. So awkward. And right? then I put author of this, host of the podcast, and fan of Kate no, Merrick. No, that's my favorite come part. On. Like my heart is all the warm fuzzy. That's my favorite right part. Um, okay, Kate, what are you loving these days? And what are you reading? Okay, loving and reading. Although first I have just this memory flashback of you in Italy. In Italy. Okay. We're all out at the pool. You come walking out, legs mile long, just tan glowing. And I was like, girl, you have a tan. And she's like, I'm part Choctaw. I, yeah. And I was like, yes, that is so Texas. I know. I'm it just, I just, I just get dark in the summer. <gasps> it was so amazing. And I was like, I loved that when you said that with your Texas twin. So sweet. Okay, loving and reading. Loving, loving. Okay, well, I'm definitely loving these press-on nails. I promise you. I cannot. Game changer. Right? When I walked up, you were like, when I walked okay, up, but like, you knew they were press-on? No, I didn't. Though. You didn't. No, I didn't. Okay, okay, okay. So, I, I okay, do you know who Christy Chowning is? Yes, and uh, Kyle? Yes. I went to, I traveled to Uganda with them years ago. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Okay, Christy's lovely. I was at a conference with her in January and she had these on and I was like, I love your nails. They're so cute. And she's like, girl, they're press-ons. And I was like, stop, stop. So she's like, yeah, Target, $5.99, done. $5.99. And they're hilarious. Like the um, accent color, uh-huh. you can give them to Story. Okay. <laughs> like, oh, so there's one accent color and everything. Yes, yeah, yeah. And you get a few of them. Um, I'm not going to lie. Okay, so I, I press them on. I clip them short because I like short nails. Yeah, me too. Uh, but they're amazing. And Five how long bucks. will they last? They've been on, I think this is day eight. Okay. Yeah. That's great. I know. All my friends are getting them now. Literally, like I have friends texting me. They're like, we're in line at Rite Aid. There's I love it. You get one free. <laughs> so yeah, so the nails. Because, you know, I get my nails done every three weeks. Oh, three weeks? Okay. That's not That's not. Bad. Well, it's more expensive than five ninety nine. It sure and is. And I just always wonder what all's on my nails because if the nails come off, the nails are nasty and broken and weak. So nasty. My first and only gel mm-hmm. petty was for it uh, for Italy. Uh huh. Which I loved, but then when they came off, like my nails were in shreds. Yeah. And I had to grow them out. Uh-huh. I know. Uh, yeah. Let's not talk got about it. it. Okay. Like press if you ons. don't know, yeah, press on. You got, got it. it. What uh, else? Dance. I've been dancing. Okay. The older I get, the more I want like. Oh, Jesus, maybe I get to do all these things in heaven, but I want to do a million more things. Like, I want to have a boutique. I want, you know, there's you only have like, a boutique. Wouldn't you could totally rock a boutique? I want to have a boutique. Wouldn't that be fun? You want to know my crazy dream? Yeah. Is a bookstore or wine shop. Okay. But bookstores are kind of a dying breed these days. I know. But you have a few of your faves. I know. Because yeah. I wanted to And put, then a wine store. We wanted to have like a Merrick family. Well, okay. So my husband's family, Channel Island Surfboards. I worked at the retail store. It's this, I mean, it's been 40 years. They have an awesome, awesome retail store. Um, but I want to have a boutique where everyone in the Merrick family does what they do. So my husband makes beautiful surfboards, like gorgeous. I mean, Doesn't he makes your sister-in-law do something too. She makes see gorgeous clothing. Heidi Merrick, you guys should check her out. Well, remember Heidi when Merrick. I was in LA and she yes. had a pop-up shop, and I yes. texted you. Yeah, uh-huh. yes, uh-huh. I went to it. I wore one of her dresses yesterday all through Austin. No less than ten people were like, "Oh my gosh, your dress!" Okay, oh I my need gosh, to look her dress. up. You mm-hmm. do. Okay. You need to look her up. Heidi Merrick. Heidi Merrick. Um, so we want to have a boutique with like her clothing, things that I love and curate, my books. My son does work. My did you know this? My son made my trailer. Harper Collins paid him cash money. Did you watch the trailer? No. Did you watch it? No. Watch the trailer. Okay, I will. Watch the trailer. My son made it. I love that. He literally like- My son wants to do video and stuff. And yes. I'm like, I'll pay you. Oh, yeah. Because I can pay him a lot less than I pay Ruben. No, it's people. so true. He's really good at it. Okay. He just got hired by Random House to do another book trailer. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's legit. He He does like- brands and all the things. So I want to have a boutique with like stuff that we all do and I make. I love that. And it would be fun to have, you know, like some juice or smoothie yeah. or yeah. something that is hippie. Uh-huh. Okay. So what else? Oh, dancing. Like? dancing. Okay. So I need to kick it up a notch in the fitness department. Okay. Like I feel like, um, you know, you have a baby. I had my last baby at 39. That was weird for me. I had my first baby at 26. And so I was just like, woo, and mama just wants to fly around and read books with her babies. And I know it's not good for me. And I know I need to get the my endorphins running. So I've been dancing. I roll back my cowhide rug 
And I turn on like a dance DVD uh-huh. and just follow along. And I don't, that's whatever. It's just like you're dancing with a friend. It keeps you going. So yeah, I've been dancing. And Fifi now, she'll either dance with me or she knows like, mommy, are you going to do your workout? So I'm really proud of myself. Oh, yay. I love it. Do you want me tell you a funny story about a dance video for me? Yes. This was years ago. We only had two kids who lived in Tennessee. And um, Aaron traveled and I got a workout video. Okay. And it was a dance video as well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is going to sound so inappropriate, but I'm like a married woman. Okay. So this yeah. is like married people can Don't do. Don't tell me it's like pole dancing. It was striptease. No! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. So it, it was a it was a striptease, <laughs> which I've never done this in a pro- I've done a lot of things in my life. I've never done this as a career. Oh but my it gosh. was a as a career. You <laughs> notice she threw in as a career. Okay. So I've never done this. Okay. I've never done it ever. But okay. I get this workout video from the library. This okay. is like no. or maybe Netflix. Because remember they used to send you vi- DVDs I still get in the those. mail? I don't have Wi Fi. I you get, get them in the mail. I get DVDs they in the mail. They still do that? Yes. Oh you don't have Wi Fi at your house. They do. No. So if I, I want to watch a movie, I need to order a DVD. I'm sorry, my my jaw just dropped, Kate. Yes. I'm like so sorry that I was like, "What's wrong with you?" Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so I love it. I might have gotten it in the mail. I don't know. Okay, so I was doing this workout video while Aaron's out of town, okay. all with the idea that when he comes in town, no. I'm going to do this for him. Best <laughs> like, wife ever, right? So, but he got back in town, and I didn't feel confident. I needed to watch her to follow along. No. Oh no! So I made oh, him no. sit behind the TV no. in the other room. <laughs> so that, there's no way, and you know what? I was gonna let him see that video. <laughs> yeah, no, uh-uh. no. So then I like. Can you imagine someone trying to no. be sexy but like watching a TV show no. and counting, and then our husband's in the other room because he can't come look at what's on the TV? No. That was my. I've only done that one time. I think we just laughed about it, and oh I cannot even believe gosh. it. Gosh, I love that story. I'm not a very good dancer, so I'm sure it. You was- are so brave and bold. <laughs> that is amazing. Okay, so press on nails, dance, dance cardio, workout. Yes. What else? Kale salads. Oh yes, I told you I'm hippie. So listen, but I not love kale just kale salads. salads. So we have kale growing in our garden and chard too. So kale. So you cut it up. You, you always you have to cut the ribs out. Mm-hmm. Just people listening, you got cut, you cut the ribs out. Cut it up. You have to massage it. And you got to speak loving words yes. over it. <laughs> you are a hippie. <laughs> no, I don't do that. But you pour a little oil on it, massage it, because it's easier. Well, it's tastier. It's better to digest. Yeah. So you massage it. So there's oil, olive oil. And then I just do fresh lemon juice all over it. And then just a, like a buttload of pecorino mm, or parmesan yeah. or whatever cheese you prefer. But I love pecorino. And, and garlic, too. A little bit of garlic in there. It will take it where it wants to go. But this is the, what I've been doing because, you know, you can't just eat a kale salad and be like, I'm good to go. You're like, I'm freaking starving. I need some protein in my life. Yeah. Not going to lie. Sardines. Oh, you. Sardines. I promise you. Sardines. Yeah. No, if you listeners, if you could see Jamie's face, like this is hilarious. I wish, I wish people listening could see her is face it, right are now. Are they good? No. Okay. I used to feed them to Fifi when she was a baby because our pediatrician is like, they're so healthy, full of omega-3s, yeah, uh-huh. such a good thing. And she would just eat them down. And I'd be like, this is disgusting. I, this is child abuse. I can't right. believe I'm doing this. So you can buy them wild caught, BPA free, like all the things at Costco. So I had a couple tins left over from yeah. when she would eat them. And I one day I was like, oh, I need a little bit of some protein. I opened up the can. I threw it on there. Delicious. So was, they're not crunchy or anything. They're no. kind of slimy. And they're headless. They're headless and okay. gutless. Okay, good. But the skin is on them. Okay, but but that's where you get all the probably. Ma- I'm making Who knows? stuff up. Yeah, yeah, we're making stuff yeah. up. It's amazing. They're smoky and tasty. You just can't look. You just gotta okay, shut I'm your eyes. Try it. You I'm gonna are. try your kale salad with okay. sardines, Do it. and then I'm gonna send you a recipe of Aaron's kale salad, Ooh, and okay. you're gonna die as well. I'm so you'll have another die. recipe. Okay, I'm to definitely gonna kale. die. Ooh, I'm on your. Um, remember, I'm making oh, yeah. some. Yeah, I need to swap a couple recipes out because I'm gluten free right now. Uh huh. Because I got like weirdo skin things yeah. on my hands. But I'm have you made so anything excited. yet? Nothing yet. Okay. Book launch. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You're kind of in the thick of things. I've been in the zone. Yeah. But I'm yeah. all good now. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, I'm gonna try sardines. I've had them once before. Um, this is this is my this is my experience with sardines. I'm at a hotel. Okay. After I speak, I literally want to eat everything that you have on your menu. Yes. Like I need a, I need a salad and a burger and some pizza and yes. a beer. Like I want everything. So they yes. bring me my food with two silverware and two cups. Uh, I'm the only one in the room, but they think that no my way. order is so big that That's they're asking so me to good. Well, they asked me. I ordered a Caesar salad. They said, "Do you want sardines on it?" 
And I thought- Sardines? It usually comes with anchovies. No, that's what it was. The story anchovies. sucks. It was anchovies. The story sucks. It does not suck. What happened with the anchovies? I didn't eat them because they were disgusting. They're disgusting. Okay, see- See, sardines and anchovies it. are two different things. I was going into the sardine salad thinking I was eating the anchovy salad from before, and I'm glad it was cleared up just now. Yeah, see? Now, I feel like Aaron would be down with the sardines. I'm going to get us you, some. You need to get it. You could even put them on a cracker or oh. whatever. Like, they're delicious. You could, I mean, w- I love doing, like, charcuterie. Like, uh-huh. you just, I don't know if, if it's technically, if it's charcuterie is just, like, the meats and whatever. But we do, like, a big old platter. And we pile it with just all kinds of, cre- like, smoked ahi, uh-huh. all the things. And just, like, th- we'll just do that for, like, we'll have people over and just eat that. Yeah. It's so fun. But, yeah, sardines. Okay, I'm in. Yeah. I'm in. What yeah. are you reading these days? Okay, so— just finished book launch, so yeah, it's been You're crazy. still book launching, by the We're, way. I'm still. Book I mean, launching. it's like a I'm thing. Still book yeah, I love to read. I literally have like 25 books going at once, but I couldn't think of any standouts except for Christy Purifoy's book just <gasps> came out. I can't wait to read it. I got it in the mail. Place she was maker. on our trip with us. She was on the to trip Italy. with us. She's like, she's lovely, so beyond lovely. Love her. Mm-hmm. So placemaker is that what it's called? Maybe. Placemakers. It's either placemakers uh-huh. or placemaker. She is the kind of person who, when they talk, you kind of want to like lean in. Oh yes, because it sounds like they're they're reading this beautiful story yes. to you, but she's just talking to she's you. She's just talking. You know what I mean? Yeah. Plus her glasses. They were like gold. Remember I know, that? Or like yes. rose gold? They were yeah. so cute. Yeah. She's so cute. And um, I also want to dig into dear daughters. Susie. I have Susie it. Davis. You have it. Yeah. Too. Do you know yeah. Susie? I do. She's lovely. She's so lovely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. She's great. Um, okay. So book launch right now. You're almost done with it. Um, what is, if you could say my, this book, here's my hope for it. I'm putting it out to the world. Mm. Here's what I want from it. Okay. I want women to read it and know that their life matters no matter what it looks like. Like if it's hard, if it's boring, if you got toddlers hanging off your legs and there's snot all over your clothes, or if you're single and you're just like, where's my man? Or whatever it is, I want you to lean in right where you are. Have courage because that life is so beautiful. I look back on like our worst days and I think there's a beauty in that. And I'm so thankful I had the opportunity to lean in. So any girl, I don't care where you're at in life, Lean in with everything you have. In the small moments, lead into the big moments. I love it. Yeah. Thanks, Kate Merrick. I'm a fan of you. Jamie, I'm a fan of you too. Okay, friends, I am so thankful that you listened to the show today with Kate and I. I know that you enjoyed it. Go check out Kate's new book. It's called Here Now. It is a beautiful story of expressing the importance of being present in each moment of your daily life. And I love and adore Kate so much and her book so much that I was so thankful she asked me to. I wrote the foreword to her book and I meant every single word that I said in that foreword. Today's show was edited by Chris with Podshaper and the music was developed for the show by Matt Graham. Show notes are written by Aki Slockers and this whole thing is organized by Lindsay Sweeney. Next week, you guys, we have a special show for you. It is our five-year birthday anniversary. I cannot even believe it. Can you say birthday anniversary in one sentence? No, it's our five-year birthday, you guys. So I decided to have two of the people who helped this whole thing go off, and that is Amanda Brown, who runs our events, and Lindsay Sweeney, who handles all of our podcasting. And they sat down with me in my studio, and we answered your questions. And we talked about what the last five years have meant. And I'll tell you, there were tears. They surprised me and told me the kind words that you guys say about the show. And I cried so much that I was nasally for the rest of the show. It's a fun anniversary birthday episode. Okay, and I have a special guest in my studio today who wants to finish the show. Guys, enjoy your week and share the show with a girlfriend and have a happy hour with a friend. Thank you, Story Ivy. Okay, guys, for real, enjoy your week. Share the show with a girlfriend. Have a happy hour with a friend. I'll see you guys back here next week with my friends, Lindsay and Amanda, as we celebrate the fifth birthday of the happy hour. <laughs>